morning, everyone. We have the pleasure of having Professor Sukhatme with us. Ever since we forayed into other core engineering courses, starting with mechanical engineering department, Professor Sukhatme has been coming over on every event to encourage us and encourage all of you. I'll request Professor Sukhatme, uh, Professor Gaitonde, Professor Sridharan, Professor Prabhu, is Professor Vedula here? Ah, yes, please, please come over. So let me begin by welcoming Professor Sukhatme. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Professor Vedula, Head Mechanical Engineering Department. Thank you. Professor Gaitonde was essentially creator of this stream of mechanical engineering courses. And of course, both my colleagues whose show it is over the next two weeks, I, I not only welcome them, but thank them for taking all the efforts. Thank you so much. <laughs> Professor Kannan Mautgalya is going to be the first speaker of the event. And I kept him at the end. That is because he is not really a guest. He is the overall coordinator for all national mission projects at uh, IIT Bombay, including this one, of course. So I am very happy to welcome Professor Kandan Mautgalya. Come here. You have to speak, of course. But I will still formally welcome you. So you are part guest and part host. <laughs> okay. Without further ado, I will hand over the mic to Professor Kannan Mautgalya to give you an overview of the entire uh, mission project set that we are conducting here and those which are being conducted nationally. Professor Sukhatme, uh, Professor uh, Gaitonde, Professor Vedula, Professor Arun Kumar Sridharan, uh, Professor Prabhu and of course uh, Professor Patak. Patak and uh, uh, all the participants and the dignitaries who are visiting, uh, uh, representing their uh, respective uh, institutions. It uh, gives me a great pleasure to uh, invite you all to this uh, inaugural. Um, I want to give a, a brief, brief overview of this uh, National Mission on Education through ICT. Uh, it was uh, inaugurated in 2009 uh, February by then uh, the HRD minister, Mr. Arjun Singh in uh, Tirupati. It has a uh, total uh, budget of 4,612 crore, uh, out of which 60 percent is reserved for uh, bandwidth and um, uh, through this every university gets one GBPS uh, bandwidth, uh, 75 percent of that money is uh, given by the mission and 25 percent from the university. And because it is a big order, almost 2800 crore, BSNL is given a huge discount of 95 percent. So, uh, bandwidth is available to the universities at almost 1 percent of the cost. So, that is one of the major uh, objectives of this mission to provide connectivity. Second one is uh, to create uh, content. Um, that is about uh, almost uh, 1800 crore and um, it is that fund, that head that supports activities like NPTEL and this uh, talk to a teacher project of which this 1000 teacher training program of Professor Fartek is, um, is a part. Um, of course, the third uh, component is the low cost access device and this was launched re recently on October 5th. It, was, it is named uh, Akash and then hopefully it will uh, receive, uh, you will receive that. In fact, uh, the mission director Mr. N. K. Sina has written a letter to uh, all the vice chancellors of universities. In fact, he has written also to principals of every college uh, asking you to identify the need that you have for such a device and you will have to spend only half the money which is um, 11, uh, 1138 rupees. So, at a very low cost, uh, a complete uh, computer system will be made available. 
uh, it's an amazing thing. One always compares this low cost access device with uh, something like iPad. Um, iPad is of course a lot more expensive. It's uh, forty thousand rupees. Um, uh, in, uh, of course, it has better um, GUI and stuff like that. But on the other hand, it can never become the computer because Apple will never allow iPad to um, um, cannibalize this um, MacBook Pro on which they get a lot more money. So, they will always restrict the capabilities of iPad. On the other hand, the, um, the uh, low cost access device that is developed by the mission will have no such restriction. And um, in fact, we expect uh, ARM Cortex A8 based uh, processor to be available in the pilot uh, stage itself with, should be available in a couple of months. And uh, in fact, much better devices will be available. So, the letter will be coming from Mr. Sinha. I would want all the uh, college principals, uh, directors, uh, institute directors, vice chancellors to uh, please give your feedback as to how many devices you want, because the more the number we order, the prices will be lower. Okay. Of course, here the price is fixed at maximum price is 2276 rupees. So, I take this opportunity to convey all this. I mentioned uh, 1000 teacher training program of uh, Professor Fatak. Actually, um, at the beginning everybody thought that will this ever happen. Now, I think uh, yes, I agree that it is a misnomer to call it 1000 teacher training program, because Professor Fatak is thinking of a 10,000 teacher training program in the summer. And uh, so, uh, I think uh, I am really delighted to see that this uh, experiment is uh, working very well. And um, uh, one of the uh, concerns uh, that the uh, the project approval board had at the time, uh, MHRD had at the time was, uh, will Professor Fatek restrict his courses only to computer science and IT. So, I am really, really delighted to see that uh, maximum number of courses seem to be coming from mechanical engineering, that it is indeed, uh, yeah, it is a, indeed a great pleasure to everybody. The idea is that, that we teach the basic courses in every subject. So, that the students, uh, the reason is that the students when they come to uh, first year BE, BTEC, they are as good as students going elsewhere, let us say to IITs or NITs, but uh, we are unable to provide good teachers in all the universities, uh, all the colleges uniformly and it hurts the students badly. So, the objective of this uh, program is to provide basic uh, engineering courses at least in the first year to everybody to start with, so that the students are on par and once they get motivated, um, they can do uh, very well in the rest of the years also. So, uh, from that point of view, the basic courses, first year, second year courses are exceedingly important and um, the other uh, benefit that is expected to accrue out of this exercise is that the thousand teachers who participate in this will come and participate will contribute their question paper, their syllabus, their examples, their projects and the whole thing will become a huge um, repository of knowledge and it is going to be available as a open source, uh, not only for the people who participate, but also for all the people in the country and in fact, all over the world. Uh, so, I am really delighted that um, uh, this experiment is uh, working very well and um, uh, for this experiment to be um, uh, successful, uh, it is important that, uh, that everybody uh, participates um, um, seriously. Uh, please, uh, if there is any uh, problem in uh, getting the reception or something like that, uh, please do not go away. Uh, please uh, stay back and uh, help us improve, give feedback so that we improve. After all, it is government's money, it is taxpayers' money, it should be used properly. Please do participate. Um, I remember um, uh, one uh, shortcoming in the uh, last uh, course, uh, we went there to, went to some places to re review. We found that the um, uh, questions asked by one center um, was not received well by the other centers that is one set other centers cannot hear questions posed by a center. And of course, um, uh, it is a, whereas 
the whatever is spoken at the at IIT Bombay is uh, received very well. And of course, IIT Bombay can also receive any questions posed by a center. So, uh, obviously, it is a technology problem, it needs to be improved, but until that time we should come up with uh, uh, workable solutions. Uh, in this particular case, uh, I requested that IIT Bombay repeated the question posed by the center. And anyway, IIT Bombay's um, audio is uh, heard very clearly. So, I think that is a um, uh, workable solution. So, we cannot wait for a perfect technology to come to get started with whatever technology we have, whatever shortcoming we have, we can uh, uh, work with that provided we use it properly. So, I request all of you to do give your feedback, do participate, do contribute to the repository and uh, it is after all your course. Um, so, with that I would like to um, conclude my uh, uh, brief speech. I would like to uh, acknowledge the vision of MHRD, because the objective of this mission is to raise the levels of education in the country. It is not, uh, it is not just uh, IITs, NITs, uh, engineering colleges, not only government colleges, but all private colleges as well and not only engineering colleges, science, law, uh, commerce, all kinds of colleges. So, it is an amazing initiative. and. Um, I would like to uh, thank Mr. Sinha, N. K. Sinha, who is now the additional secretary, Technology Enhanced Learning, MHRD, uh, for his vision. I would like to thank uh, MHRD secretary, uh, uh, ministers, and all the officials for uh, giving this opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Kannan, for lucidly elaborating the mission objectives, and uh, we are of course glad that. Mechanical Engineering Department has taken the lead. After all, Mechanical Engineering Department is considered the mother of all engineering. So, it is only proper that they take the lion's share in the introductory courses. At least that used to be so uh, 40 years ago when I did my engineering. But in those days, we used to study engineering for five years. Now, it has been reduced to four years. And sadly, some of the important courses have been scrapped. I am very glad that we have Professor Sukhatme here with us and I will now request him to give his inaugural talk. Professor Sukhatme. Uh, Professor Patak, Professor Mautgalya, Professor Vedula, Professor Gaitonde and the two main persons of this workshop, Professor Prabhu and Arun Sridharan. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure to be inaugurating uh, this uh, to be present at the inauguration of this main workshop. <coughs> in uh, September, I had the pleasure of uh, inaugurating the coordinators workshop, which preceded this main workshop. And uh, today, it is a pleasure to be back again for the second phase. Uh, at that time, I spoke to about 30 coordinators in a room in which those 30 coordinators and a few other people were present. So, it was the traditional way of speaking with the people whom you are interacting right in front of you. But today now I am interacting with about a thousand, close to a thousand teachers and the 30 coordinators all over the country and I have another 20 or 30 people right here present. So, I have to keep that in mind all the time and old timers find that very difficult you know to think that there are also a thousand people watching you why whatever you are saying. But that is the reality one must get used to it. Now, I am going to repeat some things that I said in September, uh, because they are worth repeating. Uh, uh, what is the purpose of this workshop, why we conduct it and so on. And there are some other things which I will say, which are I did not say perhaps in, in the coordinators workshop, which was held in September. Uh, the first thing and which probably has been said, but is worth repeating is, what is the purpose of holding these workshops? It has been said. But I think different ways, different people will say it in different ways. And uh, why this uh, workshop in the subject of say heat transfer? The purpose of holding these workshops, including this one, is to improve teachers' understanding of the subjects which they are teaching, have already taught, 
and will continue to teach wherever they are located all across the country. That is the purpose of these workshops, to improve one's understanding of the subject which one in turn has to communicate to students. The focus in these workshops will generally be on core undergraduate subjects. Like for instance, today is heat transfer, thermodynamics has already been covered, I believe fluid mechanics is following. So, most of the courses will be core, some may not be core, but they will be elective courses which are widely taken, and those will also be offered. Uh, uh, and uh, once the teacher who goes through this workshop, this main workshop of 10 days which we are talking about, we hope that uh, the person concerned, the teacher concerned and there are in this thing as I said 8, 900 will go back and teach their subject better because of that understanding that they have developed during the course. Now, at IIT Bombay, not just at IIT Bombay, but across the country, distance education is a wave and when it first came people felt that distance education means basically recording videos and making those videos available to as many people as possible. Record what you say and make that available. And that is to some extent of course, the traditional way. Uh, but gradually it became clear that some things cannot quite be communicated through videos. Even to tell a person how to teach, you need to be interacting with that person. And if you need to interact with him, you cannot record something and just send him a disk or a cassette of that. You need to be talking to him while you are doing that job. And therefore, you need a mix of communicating at a distance and yet being able to communicate by audio and video for at least part of that time. So, you need both a personal touch and you need a distance touch and you need a proper mix of these. The mix that has been conceived at IIT Bombay under this project which we are handling for the ministry is one in which there is a generally not always a 5 day coordinators workshop and in this case a 10 day main workshop. And we feel that in the 5 day workshop the coordinators come here, they are made to work, they are given problems which they have to solve, we see that they are solved correctly, we means the instructors in charge and then when the, uh, when the scene shifts later a few months later to the remote centers, those coordinators are at those uh, th 28 I think there are this time or 30 remote centers with about a thousand students who will in turn then be receiving lectures from IIT Bombay and in the afternoons having tutorials which will be conducted by respective coordinators and problems which they will have to solve. Nothing like solving problems to understand the subject. You can go on lecturing as much as you like. Finally, you have to solve problems correctly. That is what engineering is all about. So, we feel that this mix of 5 days here for 30 people followed by 10 days of intensive lecturing and tutorials at remote centers is a very effective way of reaching out to a large number of people. A thousand is the rough number which we are reaching out through these workshops. And it is become very necessary to do that because the number of teachers and the number of students has grown gigantically in India. Over the last 30 years, it is a wave, it is a revolution almost you might say. Quantity wise, we are doing all right, but what has suffered is quality and the purpose of such workshop is to raise that quality. That is really what it is all about. People are there, they have been hired, they have not perhaps quite been able to understand the subject well enough, yet they have to teach it can we improve their understanding, so that they in turn can raise the quality of their lectures and therefore, the quality of the education which they are giving to the students in their respective colleges. So, that is the purpose and this is an effective way of reaching out to large numbers. Otherwise, one would never be able to uh, shall I say reach out to a thousand teachers at one stroke, it is just not possible. The traditional way you would have 30 of them spent 50, 15 days with them out here at IIT Bombay or at some other place and then the numbers are too small to have an effect on the large problem that we have all across the country. So, that is the purpose of we feel that this kind of distance education or distance learning combined with some personal learning is an effective way of reaching out to, uh, to teachers and it is an important way of raising the quality 
of education in the country and that is the key today. If India is to go anywhere, we need numbers which we have got, we need quality which we do not quite have yet and we need to move for it. Now, quality is a very vague word. Of course, if you want to teach a subject, you must understand it. That is understood. I mean, it does not require any great statement to say that. It is a necessary condition, but as in mathematics we say, it is not a sufficient condition that one still teaches well. A good teacher needs to do much more than just understand the subject. By the way, understanding the subject itself is a big enough job, but then to be able to convey it to the student is the second part of the problem. And therefore, while the, ne the necessary condition can be satisfied by us through such workshops, the, su the sufficiency of that condition can be ensured only if you who are hearing me as teachers take up the next part on your own. So, what is it that we expect from teachers? We means I am a teacher, what is it that I as a senior teacher expect from you who are in the business now and will be in the business for years to come? what one expects from teachers today, if quality is to go up is that they must approach their jobs with dedication, seriousness and sincerity. That is a necessary part also, if you want to lecture well. No one should underrate the importance of these when it comes to teaching. Before every lecture, however old you may become, before every lecture, you need to sit down and plan what you are going to cover, what material you are going to cover during that one hour which is coming up. You need to plan out what problems you are going to solve or on the, uh, during that lecture. You need to anticipate what are the likely questions and how you might answer them. You need to feel, if you are a teacher, a little nervous before every lecture whether you are 30 years old or whether you are 60 years old. If you do not have that feeling that you are going in and something is to be done well, you will never approach it with that seriousness. So, seriousness, dedication, sincerity and a careful planning of what you are doing has to go into every lecture. However many times you may have taught the subject, that seriousness must never, never go into teaching and taking a lecture. The day it goes and you say, I know the subject, what is there, I will just walk in. That day you should stop teaching, that is what I always say. That is not the reason why I stopped teaching, I have retired, <laughs> but I am just saying that. All right. Now, remember also that since we are talking of engineering, we have to cover applications in our course. So, while one tries to do the theory in the class, one has to constantly have numerical problems which deal with some applications. And that is where teachers have to keep on innovating. One should not be doing the same problems every year, year in and year out, because the applications of a subject keep on changing as you go along. If you take the example of heat transfer, for instance, which is the subject we are dealing with here. In the old days when we studied radiation, the standard problems were on furnaces, furnace design, uh, uh, exchange of surfaces in a furnace, heat transfer between furnaces, so on were standard problems which we did. If you wanted to be more complicated, you brought in some gas radiation, so that you had both internal generation or absorption of radiation within the space of the enclosure, that was the furnace. But so many other fields have opened up in recent years, which we need to explore. For instance, uh, space as an area was unknown till 50s. The first satellite went up in the late 50s and suddenly a whole new importance came to radiation. Temperatures were not high in space and yet radiation is the only way by which heat is transferred. So, you have got to do all your calculations with the same equations at much lower temperature level. So, if you brought in problems involving space, say keeping a particular component at a certain temperature in space or finding out in order to dissipate its heat, what steady state temperature it might achieve or if you wanted to do more problems, you have to bring in that during its, the satellite is circling the earth, it is going through a cycle in which it is partly in the sun and partly not in the sun. So, there is a slow transient of about 90 minutes, which keeps on cycling and so on 
a variety of problems in radiation can be thought of and need to be brought into the curriculum. More recently, for instance, uh, in the old days, convection, forced convection generally meant flow through pipes, you know, 1 centimeter diameter pipes, 2 centimeter diameter pipes, Dittus Bolter equation, or for laminar flow, you know, Nusselt number 4.36 and things like that. Today, for instance, I mean, you know, you need to talk about heat transfer in micro channels because cooling of electronics. Uh, equipment, miniaturized equipment, cooling of ships, etcetera, has become very critical. So, suddenly you are talking of heat transfer in micro channels, where the correlations are different, where the two phase flows are different, and you need to bring in these applications in order to get students interested in life, in problems which are of interest today. So, there are in engineering, while the subject matter and the equations do not change, the applications, the problems which you deal with need to keep on changing. And so, a teacher cannot say, I did this 20 years ago and I will still teach the same thing 20 years later. At least the problems need to change, if nothing else. And they can be changed, if you just keep reading the literature a little and so on. There is no reason why that cannot happen. That is a very important part of the teaching a subject, to keep on updating problems and deleting some of the more classical or older problems, which probably are a little outdated in terms of applications. So, that is one aspect of, uh, of a teacher, that he has to have sincerity, he has to stay updated and he keeps needs to alter. A rough thumb rule, which I for a basic course like heat transfer or even thermodynamics is, at least 10 percent of the content of the course should change every year. Basics do not change, when you teach thermodynamics, the first and the second law cannot change, you cannot do much about that or deriving the general equation for an open system, a closed system, etcetera, that does not change. But the problems can certainly change and that is where the innovativeness and the interest of the student comes, if you can bring in something new. That is very important also in teaching, that kind of dedication is needed from the teacher. And then finally, although you have got the material, the, the teacher is also like a magician, you know, when he appears in the classroom, he has got to present it well. Presentation is everything. You go to a movie, the movie may have a good story, but if the actor is useless, the movie does not get far. You come out of the theatre and say, acting kaya hota, useless hota. You know, sorry, I am lapsing into Marathi. Acting madhe kaya artha na hota. But the goshta changli hoti, story changli hoti. So, you need to have an ability to present what you are saying. The teacher is also an actor. He does not like to tell others this but he is also an actor, because he is facing 60 or 100 students, he has got to do a little bit of, shall I say, being able to, he must know a little bit about how to present. So, presence means, uh, presentation means where to stand in the class, whether to stay at one place or move around in the class, whether to interact a little with people in the front row or back row or not to interact with them whether to ask questions occasionally to a student who is sleeping in the class or not to ask a question, you know, things like these. These are also part of your ability to keep students, shall I say, interested in what you are doing. Presentation also means using the blackboard well or using a, 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 a disc, I mean a pad on which you are writing well. It is very important to write carefully on the blackboard or on the writing pad which is in front of you. One should never ever scribble on it. Teachers must note this, never scribble on it. Never write in one corner, another corner, a third corner and do some, you know, something. If you want to say something, say it well on the board by writing it carefully, because whatever you write, you will be surprised, is written by students in their notes. That is what appears in the notes. If you feel something is important, make sure you write it on the board or make sure you dictate it in the class and tell them, Please write down what I am telling and dictate it slowly, because those are key sentences. You want them to go in and you therefore, need to write them on the board in order to that they make an imprint in the student's mind. So, presentation of a subject is also a very important part of what you do. So, what I have tried to say really during these few minutes that I have been speaking to you, I hope I have got few minutes. Huh? What I have tried to say to you is that quality requires many things. To some extent, others can ensure it. 
like this workshop can ensure that your understanding of the subject as a teacher improves. And therefore, you are obviously going to be able to present it well to others. But quality also requires that you be serious about what you are doing. Teachers have to be extremely serious about how they present their material. They have to plan before every lecture in presenting their material. Quality also means presenting that material effectively in the class through oral communication as well as through the board or the PowerPoint, whatever you are using effectively. So, it means many things. A teacher's job a good teacher's job is not an easy one. It is widely misunderstood, but it is not an easy one. It requires very competent people and ultimately, if it is done well, you do get the appreciation of your students. Wherever you are, students finally do appreciate it and that is the reward for whatever you do in the end, that appreciation which you get from students. So, I will end with telling you a short story. It is a fiction, but still it is a story. There was this old professor, uh, you know, he retired about 20 years earlier in his 80s, but still in good health, moving around in the country here and there. And uh, one day he was going, let us say, he was at some airport, Santa Cruz airport, say, and uh, sitting, waiting for his flight to be announced. And while he was sitting there, uh, a young man within, in his 40s walked up to him and he said, sir, do you recognize me? And, and the, the old professor said, uh, no, I really do not. He said, I am uh, so and so, I am Vijay Patil, I am just using a name. I am Vijay Patil, sir, you taught me about uh, in you know, 1975, I was in your class in third year. You taught me heat transfer. He said, oh, that is wonderful. Where are you now, Vijay? So, he told him, he said, sir, I am now a, a small scale industry I have. I have a foundry. I do investment castings. I make products which are widely used in the automotive sector. I export many of my products. I am doing well. I need a little knowledge of heat transfer also in what I am doing. And so, I am very happy with what I am doing. So, he said, good, good. That is very nice, Vijay. It is very nice to see that you are doing well. And Vijay was like a successful interest industrialist, he was well dressed. You could see that he was already traveling in business class and so on, you know, and things like that. So, uh, then uh, Vijay said something more. He said, sir, but uh, you may not remember, but uh, you did something for me uh, 30 years ago. And then it came back slowly to that professor, because now that he was telling more details, he said, you know, in my third year, I had lost interest in my studies somehow a good student when I joined the engineering college, but gradually my interest lapsed and I started missing classes, I would not uh, you know uh, attend, uh, take notes and so forth. And I, my performance was sliding and you happened to notice it because you were teaching in the third year and you happened to notice it. And then one day you called me, met me somewhere alone, not in the presence of others and you asked me what was wrong. Why, why were you not, why are you not coming to class? Why are you not attending to the lectures? Why do not you try coming to class at least? That is what you said. Just come, just attend. It will make a difference. Otherwise, you know, there is always this danger. You might fail a course and things like that and you are not that type of student. So, Vijay said, you know, you told me all this and uh, the fact that you had noticed it was something that itself struck me. And I started attending classes and sure enough, I mean, you know, passing was never an issue for me. I did well and here I am. So, I owe you, I owe you a lot that you uh, helped me back to where and uh, prevented me from straying the course of action, which could have been bad for me. So, uh, you have uh, been an inspiration, he said. And then, you know, while they were talking, you know, suddenly an announcement came and uh, his flight was announced. He said, sir, I hope you do not mind, but I have to go. My flight is been announced. He said, sure, sure. So, uh, you know, it is good I, good I met you, the old professor said. And uh, then while leaving in the traditional, of course, Marathi, Maharashtrian way, Vijay just bent down and touched his feet. He did a namaskar, namaskar miya tumanala and gela. Uh, that was the incident. 
and uh, as he left, the old man was looking after him and everything had come back to him then, that you know this he could remember the boy of 30 years earlier, he could see it now, he could because everything had come back to him and uh, he was happy that some way he had been there. While leaving Vijay said, sir you were not just my teacher, you were my mentor, you were my friend, you were my philosopher, you were my guide. Now, that's the biggest compliment that any teacher can be, any student can pay to his teacher. So, as he left, again I lapse into Marathi, the old professor looked after as he went away, he also smiled, uh, his eyes slightly, few tears in his eyes also, because of the emotion generated. And in Marathi he said, Sarthak Zala. That those who do not know Marathi will have to ask the translation from those who know. Sarthak Zala. Asato Swatashit Manala. And he said that to himself, Sarthak Zala. And that is how it ended. So, that is what teacher teaching is all about. One can convey through workshops the essence of a subject, one can improve on one's understanding. Finally, a teacher must feel that what he is doing is important is worthwhile and that somebody is going to benefit and pass on that message to others for generations to come. Then only will quality come up, then only will our nation become great and uh, that is what we all aspire for, that is what we look forward to. So, let me close this, I have been uh, extended uh, lecturing a little, you know the professors when they start speaking are dangerous people. <laughs> But uh, let me again conclude by wishing all the teachers who are listening to me success in their careers and I would like to wish this workshop also all success in what it is trying to achieve. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Prasukatme. Sukatme. Uh, every time he speaks, he always adds something different and something special and that has been a privilege for most of us. Uh, who have been here at IIT Bombay. I am very happy that a large number of teachers across the country got a glimpse of what a great teacher is made of. To begin with, I will first thank him for sparing his time. I would like all of us to remember, I think the gist of his talk was about three things. The first and foremost is that teachers must approach their job with dedication and hard work. There is no shortcut to preparation for every lecture and the fact that teacher has to be like a magician and actor to make a good presentation and a good impact on, on students. And finally, the biggest reward for a teacher is not the honors and money that one gets while those are important, but it is a recognition perhaps many, many years into the future when a student remembers you for the small but important mentoring that you provided, I think there is no equivalent honor and equivalent recognition than that. Some of our young teachers may not appreciate the importance of it, but as the time passes you will understand the need and the importance. So, thank you very much for Sukhatme. Of course, the main subject here of heat transfer, he did mention one most important thing is that while the basic concepts for any subject not only for heat transfer might remain the same, the applications would change and therefore the examples that we use ought to change. And I think this is a message I would like all of us to carry because we do sometimes tend to teach based on our own past experience without spending time in investigating new things that have been happening around us. As he mentioned, a lot of time and effort has been spent in conducting this and a series of our workshops. The coordinators workshop which was conducted by both my colleagues, Prof. Sridharan and Prof. Prabhu, where for five days they engaged with 30 coordinate, uh, 28 coordinators. These coordinators are like teachers to the other teachers who are assembled to participate in remote centers and they will be interacting personally with them in the afternoons. We do believe as Prof. Sukhatme said that this blended model 
would turn out to be a very useful model, especially given the scale of 800,000 teachers, there does not appear to be any other model to work. You would, of course, understand a whole lot of preparations that go on in conducting such workshops. To begin with, I would like to thank the coordinators of our remote centers, their institutions, and more particularly their colleagues, their technical assistants, and other people, the lab people in those remote centers, who have taken a lot of trouble to put together the edifice at which the physically participating teachers would be enjoying this workshop, would be learning these subjects, and would be doing those tutorials. So, thanks one and all. In this institute itself, we have a very large support base. To begin with, the two colleagues that I mentioned, I must thank them. They have been working for quite some time, preparing for this course, first interacting with the coordinators, understanding what is the syllabus that is prevalent in almost all universities, what kind of questions are asked in question papers and tuning their own course structure to those things. So, I am thankful for that. Uh, I must specially thank Professor Gaitonde because I was not very sure as to how much of my colleagues from other disciplines will take to this blended mode of empowering teachers. He was the first one when he taught this first course, he was quite encouraged. And one of the reasons for his encouragement, he claims, is that the infrastructure support services provided by the project team was very good. And it is this point that I would like to mention at the end to thank my own colleagues here. We have a very large team indeed. It is led by uh, four very senior managers. Uh, can we pan uh, the cameras, please? Uh, start with Dr. Mukta Atre. Yes, uh, many of uh, you would know her name because she is the one who handles almost all interaction with participants along with her junior colleague Mahind Parmar there. Uh, Kalpana is our manager who is in charge of contents. You will see her works impact, her and her colleagues works impact when we release all the contents on our portal. Uh, Jaya, our finance minister, uh, Mrs. Jaya Gayatonde is not there. Okay. Uh, uh, as you would know, well, not all of you would realize, but you know this is a very large activity even financially. We have to release funds to multiple remote centers, maintain accounts, uh, collect their account statements, verify them, ensure that all participating teachers get their traveling allowance, uh, get money to be fed at remote centers, uh, money spent on equipment, on salaries here is a tremendous amount of work. She has only one assistance and I think between two of them, they do the job of an entire accounts office. Uh, we have our video audio technology experts led by another manager, Sajjan Dikshit. Here is Sajjan. Uh, he works constantly to ensure that the quality of audio and video is absolutely as good as possible and we can see that. Uh, through the interaction that I had earlier, we had a glimpse of very good quality. Of course, thanks again to Amrita University's AVU uh, uh, tool, which we find quite useful. There are many others, in fact. We have a team of about uh, 45 to 50 people, some of them engaged in development of associated technologies like low cost clicker devices and so on. So, I take this opportunity to thank all of them. I will conclude only by saying this that this workshop for empowering teachers is only a first step. What we do expect is to create a large collaborative group in every such subject, which will not only contribute to the knowledge contents which are useful for learning of the concerned subject by many more, but that collaborative group will continue to enhance these knowledge contents. We propose to put together all the contents of this workshop, for example, after editing not only the audio video lectures, but all the submissions which are made by participants and everything will be put in open source. But I would also request these 800,000 odd teachers who are participating not to forget this collaborative effort continuation which is very vital. Even after they go back to their institutions, 
they should continue to contribute, participate in the portal that will be released, ask their own students and other colleague teachers to participate to create a sort of pan India large group of active collaborators who will enhance the examples, the tutorial problems, the, the project problems, etcetera, which larger and larger number of students and teachers can use. So, thank you very much. With this, we come to the conclusion of this uh, uh, brief inaugural session. Thank you so much.